one literally means a circle which represents our original mind or true nature when our founding master renovated, modernized the traditional Buddhism. He said that this is the direction or the motto of a one Buddhism Dharma. Daily life is a Buddha Dharma and the Buddha Dharma is a daily life. In other words, the practice that separate from our daily life is not authentic practice. We practice not for the sake of a practice for our real life. So how can we efficiently enrich our practice as well as our daily life? He said several items of mindfulness in daily life. I would like to talk this morning about one of the items of mindfulness. After settling any outstanding matters in advance, on the days of a regular Dharma meetings, be mindful to come to the temple and dedicate to yourself exclusively to the Dharma study and practice. This is one of the items of a mindfulness in our daily practice. O Chalhuan, uh, Mr. Ho is a, a ray person whose uh, Dharma stage achieved the level of uh, sainthood, even though he's a lay person. And one day he asked uh, to Mr. Desan, the third head uh, Dharma master in Mount Buddhism, probably you know, 20 years so, how can I practice uh, very well? He's uh, already very serious, uh, sincere practitioner. The Master Desan replied, do not skip Sunday Dharma service. <laughs> Before he died, he skipped after that one Sunday service when he was seriously sick on his deathbed. He ran a drugstore and he's a very busy person. So what's the meaning of Dharma service? You can practice at home, whether it's meditation or scripture study. Why? This is one of the important items of mindfulness in one Buddhism. Why do you join the Planet Fitness or some fitness center? You can work out at home. There are hundreds of great YouTube video clips how you practice the yoga or exercise. When you go there, because of the energy, the atmosphere, it becomes very easy. And sometimes you can have some personal trainer who can guide you to work out very, very well. Some people come here, especially in the United States, come here to meditate. Buddha said six paramita, paramitas. Paramita means perfection or crossing over from this shore of suffering or dissatisfaction to the other shore of freedom or nirvana. So meditation is one of six paramitas. Generosity, diligence, morality, patience, wisdom, etc. So when you travel to foreign country, if you contact a travel agency and join the package tour, everything becomes very easy and economical. You do not have to personally make a reservation of the hotel. You do not have to worry about the, about the traffic jam in some foreign city, etc. So when you come to the Dharma service, 
Dharma conversation, scripture study, including this kind of listening to the Dharma talk and meditation. The whole package is here. If you practice alone, it's just like a hike to the top of the mountain. If the mountain is very challenging, you may be tempted to take a rest too often, unnecessarily. And the journey can be risky and boring. If you hike along with your close friends, while you conversing each other, after some time, you can discover yourself. You already stand on the top of the mountain. So the meaning of the Sangha is, it is not the temple. That's why it's a translated, come to temple, not come to the temple. It is where the Dharma friends and the teachers are. Yeah. Why we cannot see our own eye lash. Yeah. It's a too close to our eyes. In other words, we cannot see ourselves, know ourselves objectively. We think we know, actually it's not. That's why we need some third eye of our teacher or Dharma friends. That's why Buddha said, uh, during the Buddha's time, the public transportation was very, very inconvenient. They have to walk many miles. Buddha said, uh, when some Dharma gathering is uh, held within 10 miles, all practitioners better join that Dharma. Yeah, service. So on the days of regular Dharma meetings, be mindful to come to temple and dedicate to yourself exclusively to the Dharma study and the practice. You can, you, we need to wash our hands or face pretty often. But on a regular basis, uh, we need uh, to take a shower. Likewise, uh, you can study and uh, practice Dharma at home. So coming to the temple to join the service, uh, just like uh, taking a shower. <laughs> yeah, that's my analogy. <laughs> Dedicate yourself exclusively to the Dharma study and the practice. Uh, uh, Samsung is a multi-level corporation. It has many companies. So some years ago, one CEO of a Samsung company visited uh, New York City because uh, her daughter studied in some graduate school. So he's a very busy person. For the first time in his life, uh, he had uh, two-week vacation and uh, decided his mind to spend uh, his uh, only daughter. So he drove, uh, he studied, he had a degree in USA, so they had uh, a lot of uh, free time. And the father asked her daughter, do you meet uh, some good person? When do you plan to marry, et cetera? The daughter said, uh, I might find a great guy, but I will not marry in the future. It's a very surprising thing to hear from her daughter. So what made you think in that way? Her daughter said uh, she had uh, seen how her mother lived for her whole life. He's a very successful person, but his mother felt very lonely and feels sometimes uh, abandoned. And uh, from her own experience, uh, marriage is not 
good thing. It's embedded uh, in her mind. But it's uh, too late. Uh, he's already in his uh, late fifties, uh, etc. So I later heard, uh, and that's, uh, he get along with his wife uh, very well. Do you know how many people regret their life or lifestyle on their deathbed? There are a lot of statistics. Some people regret. I just worked and worked. I lived the life what others wanted me to live. I truly did not discover the vision or dream I'd like to surrender myself to, etc. But it's too late on the deathbed. So on a regular basis, uh, come to the temple or have some quiet time to reflect your life. Not just the practicing meditation here. That's why re retreat is uh, very important. Having some sacred pause in your life. Every morning or before retiring to whether it's up to your schedule. So especially by learning the Dharma, studying the scripture, we can have a very proper orientation. Right after regular college, I went to the Protestant church for a couple of years. This is my favorite passage. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, and you will find the rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. At the time, my mental burden was so heavy. I loved the passage. I will give you rest. Yeah? I'd like to have a very good rest. Not the burden other people impose to me. The burden I myself put myself on my shoulder as well as uh, in my mind. Why? Just like many people, Korea is just like a very competitive country. If you do not work very, very hard, you cannot make it in the society. I started uh, to meditate to practice yoga from my junior in regular college. But I come to find somewhat free and contented uh, life. Not from the meditation practice. When my value system was changed, I could uh, drop the mindset of a comparing mind, jealousy, etc. So Jesus said that the truth will set you free. We have to learn the truth and we have to actualize the truth in our daily life. That's the power of the studying the Dharma. Many people praise the Jewish people, but like uh, Almost 30% uh, of the Nobel laureates are Jewish people. In the whole world, uh, they comprise 0.4% of the population. So around 30% of the students as well as the professors in Ivy Leagues, in those distinguished colleges, are Jewish persons. Why? They are very creative. One scholar said they observe the Sabbath. So one of the Ten Commandments is observe the Sabbath by keeping it holy. Wow. 
in New Hampshire, for example, when the, there were a lot of uh, Puritans and the Puritan spirit, fundamental spirit was uh, very strong, just like in all the days in Israel, if uh, you work, whether it's uh, carrying water, bake bread, walk a long distance, uh, you are executed. It's a very serious uh, commandment. You're not supposed to clean your house. You cannot make milk. You cannot bathe. You cannot cut your hair, etc. In other words, you need to have uh, a complete uh, rest, mentally or physically. Calvin said, if you work on Sabbath, God cannot work within yourselves. God created the world for the first six days, and for the last seventh day, he rested. It's a holiday or holiday. Observe the Sabbath. When you have a very good rest, once it's not just having fun. Dedicate yourself to the Dharma study and the practice. Authentic mental rest. Then you can be far more creative. You can be a very wise person so that your choice can be very wise or right so that your destiny can be changed just like a frog, in order to jump forward, they needed to squat a little bit. We need that kind of a mental vacation once in a week or one or two hours every day. Yeah. Having meditation, practice meditation, and studying dharma, etc. But you know what? When you decide your mind, join the service, whether it's a Sunday service or Wednesday meditation class, as soon as you decide your mind, for example, I will not skip the Sunday service, something happens. Something always happens. Unexpectedly, you receive a phone call from your friend. He has not contacted you for years, but you happen to fight your spouse, etc. Something happens. When we move towards the light, there is a counter force. It is the universal principle of cause and effect. Think about the passage of the Lord the prayer. It is the prayer Jesus taught to his followers. Lead us not into temptation. What does that mean? There is a temptation, especially to the practitioner. So, our second Heta Dharma master, Master Jung San, said, uh, you, one Buddhist, uh, offer this prayer, it's like uh, seven or eight lines. One of the lines says, please remove all obstacles, mental obstacles, in our mind from our life. When you chalice the Dharma or the Sangha, and when you decide, I will not skip, then that kind of obstacle start to vanish on your own. For example, well, when certain circumstances, things allow me, then I will join the Dharma service. Then a thousand obstacles can arise. If you drive to the Washington DC in the early morning, you get up and decide your mind, 
Whatever happens, I need to arrive to Washington, D.C. Then you will definitely reach to your destination. Buddha constantly traveled around. Why? To meet as many as people. And the Buddha ate one meal. He technically, it's called Chilgashi. He can drop one house. From there, he can have enough amount of food. But he always visited seven houses door to door. Why? In order to meet as many as people. He would like to want his students to create a far more closer karmic tie or dharma affinity with him. Buddha said, there are a group of people that even tens of thousands come into this world but cannot help. That group is the people who does not have any karmic tie with them. If they do not have a karmically linked, there is no chance for them to meet each other. That's why Buddha said, even though you cast a stone to me, you better have some karmic tie than none. So you can practice at home, but when you join the Sangha, then we can connect our mind and heart to saints and the sages. It's uh, invisibly our practice, our mind and heart is uh, empowered by the spirit or power of the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas. We just uh, chanted Heart Sutra, the Bodhisattva of great compassion. When you go to the Eastern monasteries, uh, Buddhist monasteries, uh, you can see the statue of uh, Bodhisattva of Compassion. There are a lot of uh, different Bodhisattvas, but how can you tell which is uh, Avalokitesvara Bodhisattva? The one who wears a kind of hat or a crown. On his forehead, uh, you can see lots of uh, Buddha statue. This means uh, when Avalokitesvara Bodhisattva was uh, regular practitioners, uh, these uh, Buddhas or his uh, teachers uh, guided him to attain supreme enlightenment. Even though he attained great enlightenment, uh, he always uh, would like to link his mind and heart to his uh, teachers, those uh, Buddhas. Probably in the level of uh, Dharma power of Avalokitesvara, maybe far higher than his uh, teachers. But he really enshrined his, uh, all these uh, Buddhas in his uh, mind. Our founding master attained the great enlightenment. Uh, do you know what is the first uh, job? Before teaching, his followers, uh, there is one thing. This is a very important uh, Dharma task. Our founding master, after reading Diamond Sutra, he linked uh, the Dharma lineage to traditional Buddhism, saying Shakyamuni Buddha is uh, the sage of uh, all sages. So with uh, whom? You hang around on weekend or on weekday. On weekday, we have to work. It's very, very important. We are influenced by the people that's around us. So I think you, this morning, you made a very wise choice coming here. <laughs> so let's not forget, when we upgrade, improve better our mind, our life will be improved. Our destiny will be changed. Thank you.